Hi again, everyone. Uh, I'm Emily Sanford, and I'm a PhD student here in the Cool Worlds Lab at Columbia. Uh, and I'm wearing the same shirt this time because I'm filming these videos back to back and not because I forgot to do laundry. It's definitively not because I forgot to do laundry. So last time I told you about the paper that I wrote with David about shadow imaging, uh, or the problem of taking an observed light curve and figuring out what shape of object transited in front of a star to produce it. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this project because there's some fascinating stuff to share. And in particular, I want to tell you about the degeneracies of shadow imaging. And by that, I mean the ways in which different shadow images can produce the same observed light curve. So firstly, why should we expect degeneracies in this problem at all? Why should we expect that more than one shadow image could correspond to the same light curve? And the answer is that in this situation, we're trying to recover two-dimensional image data from a one-dimensional light curve. And there's kind of inherently in that situation not enough information to give us a single definitive answer. So a fitting analogy might be to, to look at a shadow puppet on the wall and try to figure out what arrangement of, of hands produce that shadow. So notice that more than one arrangement can produce the same ultimate shadow puppet. So very trivially, if I were doing like a, a butterfly or a bird, I could swap the order of my hands and get the same shadow back in the end. And then if I were doing something more complicated, like a dog um, or a T-Rex skull, I could swap the order of things and get more or less the same shadow back in the end. And we find that there's analogous tricks you can play uh, with shadow imaging. So let's start with the easy ones. And these are so easy that we barely have to think about them because they don't really affect our physical understanding of the shadow image. And the first is a kind of directional degeneracy. So by that I mean that Pac-Man transiting left to right across the star creates the same light curve as either upside down or mirror reversed Pac-Man transiting right to left across the star. And we don't particularly care about this degeneracy because there's no proper up or down or left or right out in space anyway. It's just a, a decision we have to make. Uh, which direction we're going to label up. But anyway, that's the first one. So the second one is more interesting, uh, and it's about the speed at which your shadow image is transiting the star. So if you have a stretched out image transiting quickly, it can produce the same light curve as a kind of horizontally compressed narrow image transiting slowly. And here's an example. So these two images produce almost identical light curves uh, as long as the lower one is traveling twice as fast across the star as the upper one. And notice also that the lower one has to be less opaque than the upper one for the light curves to match um, because the lower one is bigger and it blocks out more area. So the next degeneracy is even cooler. And this one is the result of the horizontal symmetry of the star, by which I mean that the uh, the upper half and the lower half of the star look the same. So as a result of this horizontal symmetry, an opaque shape that transits up here produces the same exact light curve as the same shape transiting down here, as long as they're kind of the same distance away from the horizontal midplane of the star. And this degeneracy has some kind of surprising consequences. Uh, let me show you four shadow images that produce the same exact light curve. So the last degeneracy I'm going to discuss is my absolute favorite. Uh, because it's not intuitive at all. And I want to start by reminding you of what the light curve of a small, ordinary, spherical, transiting planet looks like. Okay, so keep that one in mind. Um, and now here is a different transiting shape that produces the exact same light curve. Okay, so let's understand how these two very different shapes can have the exact same transit light curve. With this arc pair, First, there's a moment when this entire right-hand arc ingresses all at once, and that's what creates this sudden drop in the light curve. Then in the middle, the light curve is flat because the amount of opacity that's leaving the star on the right-hand side is exactly balanced by the amount of opacity that's coming in on the left-hand side. And that's possible because those two arcs are not uniformly opaque. They're more opaque out at the top and bottom than they are in the middle. And then at the end, the left-hand arc egresses all at once, so the light curve jumps back up to flat again. In order for that opacity balance to be exactly right, in order for the transit to be flat-bottomed, the opacity has to be distributed along the arc in proportion to the sign of the angle along the arc. And this arc degeneracy is acting on every single opaque point in the image. So when we try to recover the, uh, the image of a known transiting shape, what we frequently get back is a version of that shape that's been smeared out along these arcs, but nevertheless produces the same light curve. So here are some examples. In the leftmost column, we have the true image that we used to generate the test light curve. And then the next column over, we have that same true image, but averaged across the horizontal midplane to account for the flip degeneracy. And then the next column over, we have the shadow image that we actually recover. And notice that they're recognizable, but they're smeared out along these arcs. Finally, in the rightmost column, we have a comparison of the light curves between the true image and the recovery 
uncovered shadow image, and the light curves are almost indistinguishable. They're certainly indistinguishable within the measurement uncertainty of a typical real light curve. So that's it, a quick tour of the degeneracies of the shadow imaging problem. Um, as always, leave your questions below and subscribe to see more updates from Cool Worlds.